The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction and for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth, or very accurately handling this very great, unique, infallible and inherent, great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Sidkanu, to the highest, and peace be to be the mankind on this earth, to those who believe in my Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, by faith alone, in Christ alone. And great goodness and goodwill to them who love to cherish and nourish and walk in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit by using the privacy of the priesthood to confess their sins and able to realize in the privacy of the priesthood as Deuteronomy chapter 12 verse 12 teaches to us. The priests of that time of the dispensation wouldn't have any possession of the land except to serve the Lord of a God. So it is for us in the church age when we are having the royal priesthood, nothing to possess of this world but to have to serve the Lord our God as our lives on this earth. Whenever we sin, either by thought, word or deed, using rebound and getting back into the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And in that great fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit giving our lives as a living sacrifice unto Christ, which is quite acceptable in the presence of the Lord our God. The priest would collect the offerings, whatever it may be, from heave, or burnt, or peace, or in fact even the tithes of the Old Testament, and they would give as a representative before the Lord of our God so that they could be accepted. Today every breath we go through in our lives in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, getting every thought into captivity for Christ, being under the controlling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, we have been called to give a sacrifice unto Christ that could be acceptable, well-pleasing, and a sweet-smelling aroma to Christ. Many of the people who have been there or here on this earth think, how can this flesh give offerings to the Lord our God? When you can understand the creation of mankind, the natural over the spiritual, And when the first Adam was being made, but the woman was being built upon Adam's rib, they both are not of the same origin. Yet, Christ our Lord of our God made them to realize to raise children when there are two different people being brought together. Despite their sin, God bent them to raise children. And he placed children into their family, which was not even near a perfect family. There was conflict and even tragedy. When we look upon this natural process where Adam was being from the dust and Eve is from the Adam's rib, so it is, we are natural, but we have in this earthen vessel the treasure of all out of our God, says the word. And that treasure is nothing but the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, which is of above. In similar contrast, when you can compare the differences between the both, we refer to Adam, the flesh, and the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, who is our supreme ruler, to be called as our husband and we being his wife, being in fellowship with us, we have been constantly in sin, but in Christ when we have been made nigh, we have been close to realize that we have been then the chief fallen angel known as Satan to be superior than it in spite of all our sins. Because all those sins have been blotted out upon the cross. And what are you now? You have been made a new man. How? In the terms of Endikaya, Sunekai, Hoseatis, Thessalatia, which is not of our own, but by the will of God the Father, according to his prothesis nature. So that in the pro Gonisco and the pro and knowledge of Lord of our God, we could be foreordained for Christ to be conformed in our lives. Yet being Adam, at being in flesh. 
but we in this flesh have the treasure of the greatest creator of all time the one who has revealed for us in many forms the one who comes to convince us Aglanko to certainly reprove with conviction what are you able to do so that you can able to realize the epitome which has been used just to have your rebuke but not reprove a rebuke without convention but we in Christ we have been called for Aglanko in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit because of sin says the word in John 16 19 they did not believe in my Christ my Lord my rock my salvation even today, the churches do not, do not believe that the indwelling entering ministry of Trinity in their lives. Lord God, the Holy Spirit makes a permanent abode in them so that they can realize at every place they go, it is the point of giving their life as a living sacrifice, as a sweet-smelling fragrance to everyone they go to give as Christ leads them triumphantly in the knowledge of the word of the Lord of God. Really, dear brethren, the greatest privilege what we are having in this church age has not been given in the past or in the future. Just by faith alone in Christ alone, you get back into the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, by using rebound in the prayers of your priesthood. And you have been placed over here to learn doctrine and nothing else than that on this earth. And when the in Israelites in chapter Ezekiel number 20 it has been mandated for us to realize the glory of all the lands the land flowing with milk and honey now in the churches we can term the glory of all the dispensations of the human flesh that could dwell over here right from the creation of the first Adam till to the last one in the millennium so that after the millennium when we enter into new heaven and the new earth in the form of the resurrection body is given to us and designed for us in eternity past and above all of them, this land or this dispensation of the church age is the glorious among the all. The glorious wherewith you can never even understand what it could be for you in your terms. The high and holy lofty privileges of this church age. At the moment of salvation by faith alone in Christ alone, the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. The completed can of scripture in our hands, the bona fide gifted spiritual pastor teachers who are male believers for us, who could carry this work to the next generation and who can pass down the torch to the next generation faithfully being taught. Really, the people are not able to understand the goodness which has been given for us in the church age. And that goodness for us to eat in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit every day, the spiritual manna prepared and kept for us in the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit every breath, so that we can purchase the Kairos movements in the Kronos time every day. That goodness of Christ our Lord our God. Many Christendom believers, including the so-called falsified pastor teachers who are false, have exchanged by absorbing lying vanities but not the truth. Such is the great trends in our pulpits today. The pulpits where they are not able to realize that we, the church, are of the heavenly terms. And the church age, Apostle Paul writes in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7, the church age demands for us that we have the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to the praise of His glory in His grace. The majority of the problem that the Christian has life and blessing with Christ rather than being under Him, so that we are no longer under the law, but we are with Christ. What an important difference it is between the Christian and the Jewish blessings, dear brethren. Both, of course, derive their life and blessing from Him. But Israel belongs to the earth, but whereas Christians, we belong to the heaven. Before conversion, we belong to the earth. After it, we belong to heaven. And what is the term of con conversion? We go there to preach the gospel, to tell them according to their will. Not according to our will, we force them to change. We give them the gospel, we give them the information, we give them the truth. 
But the problem with us is why they are not able to tell the truth. Jude verse 4 writes to us the nature of Asal Gia. Because of their unawareness, the heretics have silently entered in. They have been so careful enough to enter, creeping into the church age by not teaching the truth, but instead teaching them anti-truth. Anything or everything that goes according to one's, world, one's own will without the reference of God is sin, and the essence of sin is their evolution. But when we teach the gospel, our evolution doesn't impose upon others to listen to the gospel or to believe to that gospel because gospel, when we teach to them, we cannot go against their evolution, whether they may believe or not. Likewise, the same thing. The people today in today's Christendom may believe this doctrine every day to be taught in their pulpits or not. Christ our Lord our God being the greatest gentleman giving us an example to tell we cannot go against their will we cannot go against their evolution if they abide let them abide in truth if they are not able to abide let them depart let it be according to their own will the works what they do it shall be rewarded according to their hands if he is holy, let him be more holy. If he is unjust, let him be more unjust. I have the rewards according to their works. And long back in the book of Daniel, when they could recognize the Spirit of the Lord our God, whose dwelling is not in the flesh, and that Spirit could teach them and train them up about the dream of Nebuchadnezzar, what he lost, giving a greatest example for us to realize in this church age. If there was a dream that was being dreamt by you and you ask anyone others to tell what was the dream I had, doesn't it look strange? And do you know the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, the Holy of the Holies, who is the one who gives us all the thoughts, who is the one who gives us all the reasonings, who is the one who even makes us to know what is the secret of his thoughts, the one who has made them to be creation on this earth, even which has passed by by his mind. That great infinite God involves in you now. And that's the power of us wherewith we tell to this world it is no way possible for them to understand in their natural mind the supernatural things of Christ. Therefore we tell to them like the way how Adam being made from the dust and Eve being built from Adam's rib both become one though having both different origins. Likewise, Christ our Lord, our God has given you in you the Spirit. Your old sin nature, being passed on from your first Adam, doesn't jive with the nature where our last Adam has given to us the nature of righteousness and justice of the Lord, our God, in the benignity of His truth. Like the way how, when the dream was not been made able to known for them, by the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, showing its act proudly to prove that there is nothing that could be impossible with God on this earth, with our Yahweh Elohim on this earth. The men, no matter however, they can have their reasonings like the way how we have read about yesterday's tape. Their reasonings in the terms of their ministers' clots, of their deeds of righteousness, which is nothing fit for nothing. All their good deeds to be saved, having to gain the approbation before the Lord their gods are not able to possible for them to certainly be saved by their deeds, by their works. Christ our Lord our God has to give you this salvation by faith alone when you believe upon his only one saving work on the cross. Apart from that, whatever reasonings you may have, apart from that, whatever staunch arguments you may have, apart from that, whatever things you may get close enough to produce your cause before the presence of the Lord our God, those wise men of that time of Daniel period couldn't even come close enough to tell the king's dream. If it were not so, the order was been passed down to be certainly put to death. Then Daniel along with his three faithful spiritual believing friends, 
Meshach, Shadrach, and Abagnada, how great it is for us. When Malachi 3.16 has been opened before our eyes to see how many of them were really faithful, how many of them were really spiritual, how many of them were really having to, to speak about the fear of the Lord our God and their words being recorded in that, in, that, in that book, we shall look and see how faithful will be those men. Daniel had Meshach, Shadrach, Abagnado to their company and they went and knelt and prayed in his presence to know about that dream. It is nowhere possible by the so-called scientific trends of the students terms to come back and reback by the way how the people tell that they're going to put a chip in your brain and what all you have lost for last 30 years 40 years you can get back to your brain and you can understand them and it can be produced in the data format <laughs> and that includes even the dreams it may be a plausible choice whether to think whether it will be included even the dreams or not but here the greatest genius of all time our Lord, our God, shows to this world in His wisdom that His foolishness to reproduce that dream, even to the mind of the, to even to the mind of the one who feared Him, the secrets which belongs to Him, and in return going and telling to the king, "This was your dream, and you lost it." Do you know what importance it is? Nebuchadnezzar recognizes, yes, that was the dream what he had. And it may seem foolishness for them to kneel down in his presence and ask to the Lord of God to reveal that dream. The way how today science technology think, it seems foolishness for them to go to the presence of the Lord of God and to know that only Lord of God has the divine spark to give us at the moment of our physical birth and none can give you that physical birth. There is no life in the womb, neither there is any thinking in the womb for you all to understand that there is life in it. At the moment of the physical birth, Lord our God hits the soul with the, the format soul with the divine spark so that you can become a living soul. It has in the hands of the Lord our God. The people may try enough to clone, the people may try enough to cry on it, the people may try enough to go upon genome biotechnology, but they will not come. But when we kneel and pray to the presence of the Lord of our God, our Lord of our God is going to reveal that which is not even possible by the world to think. And the world may think that we are foolish, but the foolishness of the Lord of our God is greater than the wisdom of this world so that they can think they are achieving it, but they cannot. What they could achieve. In the sight of Nebuchadnezzar at that time, it was the death they could achieve. But in today's Christendom, in this certain vessel, that Spirit of God, whose dwelling is not in flesh, being placed in the glorious of all the dispensations, that the great dispensation of this church age, wherewith you and I have been given such great high and holy privileges, wherewith if you can really cherish and nourish in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, there will be not even a time for you to waste and think on this earth which don't have virtue, which don't have truth, which don't have honesty, which don't have anything that goes against the mind of Christ. You will not cherish and nourish in them. And since you have been made to be the children of Lord our God, to be in contrast of this Israel as not earth but the heavenlies, we love to be with Christ all the time, we love to be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit all the time, we love to cherish and nourish that which is truth and nothing but the truth. And we cannot go against the truth, neither we are having that strength to go against the truth, says Second Corinthians 38. We don't have that dunatas in us. We are not able who are able to go now in the church age. Those who are not having the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher, those who haven't heard the daily teaching ministry of Lord get the Holy Spirit in their pulpits with the isagogical, categorical and exegetical explanation of the word, with the right dispensing technique of dispensations, with the intense hermetical principle of the word of the Lord of God. Those who have not heard about this, they are going against the truth. Those who have not heard the right duties of the pastor teacher, they are going against the truth. Those who do not know the worth of every believer in this church age and are equal privilege and equal opportunity given to us in daily teaching and training and edifying them to the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit process, so that they could be the greatest weapons and the vessels of the Lord of our God on this earth, being sanctified and kept apart to preserve and protect His name and to honor His word above His name on this earth. And those pastor teachers who do not know about these things, they are going against the truth. And for what they are going? The ministers clad righteousness for that cause they're going to worry and to think about the softness of this world 
to worry and to think about, to tell, where will I get my bread? How will I get my bread? Therefore, though I am not such and such, I will behave such and such. Because they say, it is about all the things pertaining to your belly. The sin of the belly. If the belly is not being fed, then certainly it cries. So the belly will be their God. So what do they do? They go to exchange the glory of Yahweh Elohim for some pieces of bread or some handful of barley. That's it. And their shame is what? The shame of the glory is the shame of them. How much guts you have enough to go against the truth. And the Bible says, no woman preacher, you say, women have to be the reverend, women have to be the bishop, women have to be the pope. Are you fulfilling the terms of the Bible? I don't have time to speculate about those things, neither to think about those things except to see how many of them are grieving and squelching the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, in this greatest dispensation of all the glories of all dispensations in this church age. It is unique. It is once and for all. It will not be again in the future, neither it was in the past. This unique dispensation of the church age where we have been told to understand the calling of the Lord our God in this life and to realize our ministry on this earth to be like a miracle to these people being telling them that we are also flowing with light and salt in us does not our Lord of our God say in John chapter 7 verses 37 through 39 who shall drink this in their belly shall flow the living water streams <laughs> how many Christian believing lives have been there flowing with the streams of holy waters and by that time in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And by that time in their reason, doctrine and nothing but doctrine in their minds. Apostle Paul writes, we are not able to go against the truth. Though our names are written, and we have been called to see as sitting down in the heavenlies in Christ Jesus, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 5 through 6. Yet, many men love the essence of sin. They love their essence of sin by seeking their own will. They are not worried whether the moth will eat their garments or the worm will eat of their wool. If at all they are worried, they are worried about the lustful patterns of their old sin nature on this earth to be fulfilled. Dear brethren, we are called to rejoice in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. We are called to be constantly stay in the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. We are demanded to look. No matter how much of staunch arguments the world may have, the falsified pastor teachers may have, if you can tell the truth, the people will not give you money. If you can tell the truth, the people will not come. Your ministry will not be popularized. You may not have so many vague oriented men in your ministry. If you can tell the truth, people will not realize it. And some moron pastor will tell, if you can tell the truth, it is like sowing before the pigs the precious pearls. But... Our Lord of God said to Ezekiel, no matter what it is, tell the truth. Before swines, we are throwing out today the pearls, those who are the idiotic pastor teachers who do not have the bona fide gift from the head of the department of the church, not the congregation. The false pastor teachers who don't change and come back and put their orders. In daily teaching the word of the Lord of God in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, so that the world should realize greater is the one that is in us than the one who is in this world. And the world should realize that we are producing the character of Christ in us, so that as Apostle Paul quotes, still Christ be formed in you, the Morphete. And what is that Morphete? From your immature standards, you grow up to become mature ones. When Adam and Eve came together, they gave birth. They gave birth to Cain. They gave birth to Abel. They gave birth, again replacing Abel, Seth. 
Many positive and negative trends we look in the Bible. Likewise, in the fellowship of light, God, the Holy Spirit, there is no plausible condition that you may give only birth to Cain. The word of the Lord our God says you produce only one birth, and that is Christ. If I am referring to the flesh, Lord God, the Holy Spirit being built, in the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, we are being called to produce Him, and we are called to produce His character in us. There is no excuse. The newly created inner man being born again gets aligned only with the terms of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and His Word. He cannot go against His Word. The world may seem good to go against His Word and think yet they are doing God's will and Lord's will, which is against the truth. But we are not so, dear brethren. We are called to have our rejoice in the fellowship of Yahweh Elohim. And we are having fellowship in Yahweh Elohim because of His truth. How sad it is to look when the people write before their names reverence. If they have really been fearing to the Lord of our God, they will scratch out that name reverend title. If they are having enough guts, they would say the truth and then following his name, the word, or then following his name. If you are a bona fide gifted pastor teacher, the word of the Lord of God says, the reverend belongs only to Yahweh Elohim in the heaven, not to us. Who are we to take his essence and keep? He has given for us his absolute standards of righteousness, and he has called for us in our experiential sanctification to grow up in the daily process of holiness. As is holy, so we ought to be holy. And that holiness demands for you to cleanse out the garbage in your soul. Now as Adam and Eve being, born, being brought together as one essence and have to become one flesh. So now we, the flesh of this old sin nature and the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit whose dwelling is not in the flesh as Daniel, but now we have been there in the flesh so that the earthen vessel can have this treasure, says so 2 Corinthians 4, 7. And now we both become one. And then now we have to realize the seed that is going to be born for us should be Christ our Lord our God and the seed to be producing His character in our lives when we reach the maturity standards of His word, becoming manhood for having the predestination in our lives. And there is no chance for us to give any other opinion to go. If you're not there in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit says 1 John 3, 9, if you don't have the sperm of Christ, our Lord, our God, then certainly you will sin. And that seed is not. That will go either to Cain or that will go to another man who have sinned against the word of the Lord, our God, being born. Or in fact, even today in today's Christendom, though we have our federal head, Ab uh, federal head as Adam, and many couldn't become like Abraham or Moses or David or Jeremiah or Isaiah or John the Baptist, and many of them became in the in the contrary like the one like pharaoh whose hardness of the heart and in the contrary being mentioned for us in Ezekiel chapter 20 those children who became more rebellious than their fathers among them you will be one including even the job's wife for a human category the first one who left telling to Job, why you still yet believe and try, try to keep your integrity before the Lord of God, curse him. And Job said, don't talk like a foolish woman. As my Lord, my rock, my God, my salvation gave me everything to enjoy, so this suffering is for me. I will enjoy this. You depart from here. What a privilege it would be for us to stand for the truth. Satan used everything against Job. And the last weapon which Satan uses is his own wife. And certainly, like the way how Anani and Sapphira, when we read, the wife and the husband thought of to stand by one word. And the wife comes to tell, have you bought the same amount? She said, yes. Why you lie to the Spirit of God? Sudden punishment. After the completion of canon scriptures. Yet the same thing is there in our lives whenever we lie to the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, by the hypocritical masks of our lives. 
your physical death may not happen like the way how it happened to Anani and Sapphira. But the purpose and the calling of the Lord of a God in your lives to do His will will be certainly put to death. Because you don't change and turn unless you go through the first warning discipline by the greatest pastor teacher who can train you up in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, who is doing the truth and who rejoices in the truth and he wants you to be in the truth, who is not eager enough to take anything of you except to get your edification complex in the soul so that you can realize to bear fruit for Christ. And then if you don't listen to the warning discipline coming to the church and you say, no, I'm not interested, let me go and die on this earth. Then you go to the intense first stage of discipline till to the point of your death. And then yet our Lord our God releases you to get back to know your will, to know the Lord's will and to know his calling. In this great and unique dispensation of the church age under equal privilege and equal opportunity being given to every believer at the moment of salvation, being indwelled by the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and being baptized by Lord God, the Holy Spirit, which is not and never in speaking in tongues. But to that great royal family of God, which is not our ability to get absolutely baptized into that royal family, except Christ our Lord our God joins you to that royal family and baptizes you, so that it is no longer you who appear, but Christ in you that appears. And yet the people come to tell baptism of Lord God, the Holy Spirit is speaking in tongues. And do you know who are the people they're going to tell? The people who love to be in the Pentecostal realms, not able to get out from the mind of Acts, not able to come and look and study the things pertaining to the Ephesians, Philippians and Colossians. When they realize the, 12, the, the 10 gifts mentioned in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, they think that's great and they don't realize the seven gifts mentioned for them in Romans chapter 12. Neither they come to realize the greatest things given for them in Ephesians chapter 4, the four unique spiritual gifts, the permanency of the spiritual gifts after the completion of canon. They don't realize this order. And they say, if you don't talk along and dance along and jump along in tongues, you're not being baptized with Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And do you know what it is? And Gastro Muthas controlling their vocal cords to blaspheme my Christ, my Lord, my rock, my salvation. Gibberishly jumping along, which have no meanings at all. The meaning of tongues to be translated in literal language, it could be languages. Any language has a philology into it. Any musical instrument that you play, it has a sense in it, said Apostle Paul. Likewise, any words that you speak, it is not the heavenly words. The heavenly words are the Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic. Go back and study from the original languages of the scripture. You will understand that in fulfilling the doctrinal miracle mentioned for them in Isaiah chapter 28 to tell that with unknown languages, our Lord our God will make these Jews to understand their work which they have failed to do it. The work to go and evangelize the world, they were drinking and they were vomiting. Then, up, then, then Isaiah comes to tell to them a great warning of a sign, the doctrinal sign. In your own languages you will hear, but these languages will be spoken by these Gentiles. And yet this crowd wants to run the business of tongues by the Pentecostal realm. And do you know why they are still sustaining that? Because they cannot get out for the easily conversion of thinking, the ratification complex of their soul from the human viewpoint to divine viewpoint. They think when they gibberishly jump along and dance along and talk along in tongues, they are really being edified in Christ and they are living a life of Christ. And that's the greatest thing for them in their life. And they tell not the word of the Lord of God, they will be good enough in your pious terms, they will be good enough in their moral terms, they will be good enough in each and everything that you name. But when it comes to doctrine, these are the worst babies of all time to be changed. Because they don't get out from the stubbornness of their tongues. It is exactly the pattern of Jehovah Witnesses what they go through. As they are not able to believe in my Christ, my Lord, my rock, my salvation, and not able to believe about the Trinity, so are these tongues. They will never believe that the original language of the scripture teaches tongues as nothing but languages. And the cheapest gift says in the Vulgate of 400 AD, was tongues. That was the chiefest gift. Till the time could be from AD 30 to AD 70, those 40 years of evangelical work. It was a gift for the cheapest ones. And from AD 70, the first century 0070, they certainly ceased. They certainly stopped. 
What a great privilege it would be for us to wake up to the standards <laughs> and not able to realize. In fact, even indeed the so-called many pastors who tell the baptism has been taken in the water but the baptism has not been done in the Holy Spirit, therefore they have demon possessions. What a cults they are. What a heretics they are. What a sheer out of Asalgia these men are. And because the church is silent not to look, the infallible and inerrant word of the Lord of God to be taught every day, neither to look what are the things that the Bible exactly speaks out in the original languages of the scriptures, such and such men will grow more worse. Rather than wheat, such tares will grow up a lot. As Apostle Paul writes, the children of desolation are more than the children of a legal one. And therefore, what do they come? They don't come to teach you in a proper order, in a proper training. Therefore, we have been told in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, from verses 7 through 9, beginning at verse number 7, he concludes the matter in verse number 9, one of the greatest words for us to realize, what are we, how are we in Christ for the righteousness of the Lord our God which indwells in us. Dear brethren, when you go back and look in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse number 7 goes on to tell of verse number 6. In the conjunction of contrast, I trust that you shall know that we are not reprobates. And the trust is El Paiso to expect. How can we expect in the present Christendom the way how the church is going along in its own terms? Until unless they know some light, until unless they have been in the fellowship of that God, the Holy Spirit to reflect the truth and nothing but the truth. How come they can trust? How come they can know? How come they can realize? Do you know at least the daily teaching of the, the word of the Lord of our God is the bona fide duty of the pastor teacher and he has to be a male believer? Do you know without dispensing technique of dispensations, without proper isagogical, categorical and exegetical explanation of the word of the Lord of our God to be trained up with the fellowship of that God, the Holy Spirit with a proper bona fide gifted pastor teacher earlier to them? to look upon the right principle of this duty, they cannot become qualified to do his work. Why every knucklehead person wants to start his ministry? Once again to spread the filth, to blaspheme my Lord's word on this earth. Just for what? Because their belly is their God and they want to do it. Oil business, water business, this business, that business. The greatest miracle why you have been called is that not to be dumb, but to rather open your mouth when the people have come out from such a great rot or the drought wherewith he made them to go through the pestilence or the famine or the sword. Who will come now to search the truth and you shall not be dumb. You have been kept as a sign and a miracle for them so that they can understand what it is in the midst of such great evil. Yet we abide faithful to the word of the Lord our God. Yet we see nothing but persecution in our lives. Yet we be happy the peace and the joy that the world can give. Many people think the life on this earth is a punishment. And if they have a companion to that punishment, it would be a great thrill like Adam and Eve, like wife and husband, or the one whom you dearly love to be the uh, diligent of your eyes. They think we are already in the punishment and let us enjoy. The same terms they may think in the standards of the things pertaining to the hell. They may say, let though we be burned in the fire, yet we are having a companion and that we enjoy for eternal lack of fire. Do you know what the word says? The peace that we have on this earth the suffering that we go through, 2 Timothy 3.12. Though they go through their physical ailments, though they go through their loneliness of their life, though they go through their chronic diseases, but when we have the mind of Christ which is superior over every thought, as long as our Lord our God seems fit for us to stay alive on this earth, He gives that peace not to worry about the perplexity of your thoughts, about the chronic diseases of your life, and He makes us not to worry about the loneliness to be regretted, to be paid back. What you have done was failed in your life. 
but you have Christ in you and you have done his work that's enough that's a great thing and that's the greatest company what you can have and when you go along with your family with your friends and with God when the relationship with Lord of God is straight and right and correct Though we go with our family, with our opposite sex, or with our friends, or with our brothers and sisters. Yet you will produce the character of Christ, of the spirit of fruit. Love, joy, peace. And you will certainly enjoy. But in the hell it is not like that, dear brethren. That's a punishment of eternal death. There, no there is no coupling together like to be the corporate witnesses. There is certain individuality. Everyone has his own burden to carry there. For the cost of ignorance of not believing in my Christ, my Lord, my rock, my salvation, of the only sin that accounts to the credit because they did not have faith and believe in the Lord, in the Lord's word. Therefore, we have been mandated every believer to become an ambassador to the Lord so that they can become in return the greatest missionaries for Christ and at every breath of their walk of life in the holy manner standards, they should preach Christ, Christ, Christ. They should make known the gospel of the Lord our God to these people so that they should not be burning in the lake of fire forever. Therefore, your lives have to be ordained and they have to be down equipped. The Greek word called as katharistan in Hebrew in 2 Corinthians 13 9 calls for us to repair and to mend you, to train you, to properly discipline you, and to fully instruct you, to put in your mind its appropriate position with great wisdom and propriety with the daily growth of the word of the Lord of our God. Therefore, you can walk holy as holy Bibles on this earth. So that unbelievers can wake up and look upon your peace, look upon your life, look upon your holiness, and they could believe in my Christ, what God they serve, so that they are so happy. <laughs> Not the thought where the people think that this life is a punishment, and if you have a companion, we can have great joy in this punishment. Nothing. Adam sought Eve in his cognizance of knowledge. He went along in his ignorance. But they both ended up in what? In grief. What the curse says, no matter however you work out, thorns and thistles will be on this field, since you hearken unto the voice of your wife. And how great you will have a companion of corporate witness to tell, and by that I mean a couple's not the MGG corporate witnesses who are growing up in the knowledge of Bible doctrine. But those who ignore to grow up in the knowledge of Bible doctrine look upon their life, they have mess in this punishment, which they quote that the life on this earth is a punishment and if you have a companion it will be a great joy. Both are miserable, leading to miserable deaths. But when you go back to hell you will realize when we listen the parable by the way how Christ our Lord speaks in Luke 16. One drop of water from thy servant Lazarus. Or if there would anyone go from this life, from this death unto life and tell to my brothers. Because they are also enjoying the same life. He knew the individuality there. Every man after his own order, every man after his own fate, every man after his own works. They shall pay back, not a couple, so that there also you can dance and enjoy in the fire. Correct this thought. We have only over here on this earth been coupled in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Though you abide in the flesh of ignorance, which is weak, yet Lord of our God has given a solution for us in Luke 22, knelt and prayed unto the Lord of our God to say, yet, yes, O Lord, spirit is willing, but yet the flesh is weak. Many people think the flesh is great, but the flesh is weak. But in this flesh of our Lord of our God set for us to have a great joy and peace that the world cannot give. What is the joy and peace when we obey His commands, when we follow in His word, when we look upon His truth, what a fellowship we have with Him, that's the greatest joy we can enjoy. 
obeying his mandates, obeying his truth, obeying in his righteousness and in justice, and obeying and to honor his word above his name. What a peaceful life we have. You really do not know about this, dear brother. And many people don't even understand about these things. The greatest life given to us. But yet Apostle Paul writes in the conjunction of contrast of 2 Corinthians 13, 6, I am expecting that you shall know that we are not disqualified or documents, that we are not reprobates. Who are reprobates? Those who daily teach the word of the Lord of our God, do you know at least the biblical principle which tells to us it's not weekly once or monthly once, it's every day the word of the Lord of our God has to be taught morning one hour and evening one hour and you can call yourself that you are not a reprobate and you can be expecting to test us. Who are reprobates? Those who teach the word of the Lord of our God every day or those who neglect to listen to the word of the Lord of our God every day. And those who act like pastor teachers who don't have the spiritual bona fide gift to teach with authority the mind of Christ. And yet they stand that they are great ones and they will be called as the great ones in the sight of the Lord of our God. Are they the reprobates? Are they the one who daily teach? Kneeling down in his presence, the word of the Lord of our God are reprobates. What a great shame it is whenever we look and think. People love to follow the crowds. Blind following the blind. The dead burying the dead. But they're not following my Christ, my Lord, my rock, my salvation. Happy enough to look and to enjoy that so many people are coming to the ministry. And do you know how many people are to be edified in the process of Lord God, the Holy Spirit every day? And do you know how much of knowledge has been there for them to thought of? If you have hundred children, can you reap them up to the proper edification so that they can become the disciple, disciples or if not the, the responsible citizens of your country? You cannot write. You cannot even name or you cannot even think of them. Then if you have certain million people in your church, do you at least know them by your name? That's not Christ our Lord of God saying in John chapter 10, the sheep, they know me and I shall call them by their name and they shall hear me, they shall come to me. Who are reprobates? Making money out of that sheep. Calling that's the blessing ministry of the word of the Lord. Millions might have come. Multitudes might have come. Said our Lord of God in his parables. And when they found. In the greatest discourse of John chapter 6. They left. How we can eat the flesh of this man, how we can eat the drink, how we can drink the blood of this man. Does not have a lot of a God say to them, and he says, Will you also depart? Then Peter says, How can we leave, O Lord? You have the words of the living one in you. Multitude people coming just for the sake of their blessings, and you encourage them to tell that you can give them their blessings by doing miracles and healings and not teaching them the right word of the Lord our God. How shameful you are, how impoverished you are, how great traversing donkey you are to cheat those innocent men who haven't even made their foundation to look that it is the infallible and inherent word of the Lord of our God that should qualify us and if the word of the Lord of our God says we are not according to his terms then you will be termed out as reprobates our documents who have failed to pass the examination in the sight of the Lord of our God and yet you stop them to tell the truth and not make them to realize the truth and you tell, just follow my teachings, just follow this, just follow that. You will have a certain great blessings. You will have this, you will have that. You come to my church for three times in a month or four times in a month. I'll give you some oil, go and pour it down. The work is with the Rima declaration. The work is with abiding in Christ. The greater we reject to abide in Christ, the greater we are going to have that which doesn't even count for you to think that you're having your prosperity in Christ. 
it is christ our lord our god who has to be wherewith we have to abide in him without abiding in him we have nothing dear brethren remember this thing life is too short and if you are not abiding in christ there is nothing that can cause you to look upon your will because everything seems straight and right and good in your terms until unless you wake up with the blapo and blapete terms of the greek the two words the blapete used in colossians 2:9 the blapo which has been used in the terms of ephesians chapter 5 to think accurately blapo blapete look up on the harm that is going to come upon you and be aware of it which is not in accord with Christ they may come with their matalogia pitanologia moralogia and they want to come and have the discourse towards you and they say they are doing great things they will call themselves as reverence they will call themselves as what and ever that goes against the mind of Christ so that the people are not even aware what is the mind of Christ and don't be pleased by their miracles or healings or their tongues Second Corinthians 11 verses 12 through 14 digits was you shall know them by their works what are the works you can know by them they daily don't teach the word of the lord of god they daily don't care for the flock of church they don't really honor lord's word above his name if they would then they would go back and read in the original languages of the scriptures they would not steal that they would come for you with the proper process of exegesis if they would then they would come and teach the daily burden given to them daily morning one hour and evening one hour and they would train you up for the praise of his glory and his grace every day if they would they would certainly cause you to expect to understand that they are not reprobates but they have given to you in the sight of the lord of a god approving things of the lord of a god so that it is no longer that you do evil by acting that you are good but you have to show that which is ideal that you have been there the knowledge of christ not acting in the terms of hypocritical masks except abiding in Christ our lord our god we can do nothing except abiding in the fellowship of lord god the holy spirit we can do nothing except believing in my christ my lord my rock my salvation on this earth you don't have any life to be turned out to be a great one and which is nothing but a sheer rot of your own vain vague reasoning and that is also nothing it is also chaos it is also matiotes and yet we find many people loving to cherish and nourish in nothing sowing to the wind and reaping whirlwind and if lord of a god is a witness against you from his holy temples who can stand in the presence of his righteousness dear brother can you stand can i stand If you are not able to witness his truth, you can never stand. Yet the greatest grace upon this church is Jude writes in twenty four and twenty five, who is able to keep us from falling. When we fight a good fight, a content of faith for the Lord of our God, He is able to keep us from falling. And by that we know certainly the believer will fall because he is weak in his flesh. but when we become the bond slaves of the lord of our god and when we become the prisoners for christ of our lord of our god we will be mortal until the work of the lord of our god has been done on this earth and we don't have time even to think the perplexity the chronic diseases are in fact when indeed the regrets of the consciousness of your soul to cause you to stumble because we have don't have time to worry about them we are worried about only one thing have we thought the word of the lord of god or not how much you go along to explore the divine illumination of lord god the holy spirit it cannot be completed every day a new thought every day a new performance by the fellowship of lord god the holy spirit to divinely illuminate us by shedding the light in our lives this life is not enough when we look back john 20 31 that one alone verse is enough to this entire creation far less the remaining verses which have been revealed and kept for us as deuteronomy 29 29 
and we shall asa them, we shall build them. Our lifetime is not enough. When you have your godly seed and you train them up by the age of 14 to become greatest men and by the age of 33 they could become a life that could be after Christ after the day of the 33 years. Even this 33 years is gone in waste. Do you know why? Because the man, a child cannot reason till after the age of 9 or 10 when he reaches his God consciousness or the consciousness of his own will. The 10 years have been gone as a trial. And if Lord our God could grant you a great life like Moses, 120 years, the remaining 110 years, every day you come along to teach in the great exposition, in the great exposition method of Lord God, the Holy Spirit in training you up. These 110 years are not enough to complete this Bible, dear brethren. <laughs> you forgot about your life. You forgot about everything. You forgot about everything of your survival on this earth. You are looking upon only Christ and His Word, Christ and His Word, seeking His righteousness and His work. A Lord our God will provide you because you will not be put to shame, neither to reproach. Because we trust in the Lord our God. His, His words doesn't fail. With faith we go in Him. And He's going to certainly satisfy us with all the desires of our life. The one who loves to take upon the word of the Lord our God, He provides. The one who loves to seek and to search His word above His name to be honored, certainly He has been provided. The byproducts of your pleasures of this life on this earth with your wife, with your children with your father and mother, with your grandchildren or with your children that is going to be fulfilling Psalms, Psalms 123. Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine. And all of these things. You can't even imagine your flesh may fail, but his desire of goodness will never cease. Exemplified for us by Abraham. For one son, Isaac, the revival nature of Abraham came back. He went along to marry Keturah as well to prove it abides forever. They died, but the things pertaining to Abraham never ceased. Those who make Lord's delight in our lives by daily teaching the word of the Lord our God and being able for us to see in you that Lord our God delights only in his word. And those who love to honor his word above his name, do you know what Christ our Lord our God the Father does for us? We may perish. And by the time in the flesh and blood. But his cherishness and goodness abides in our lives forever and forever. Even to the generations to come one upon the other. His servants will be established forever. The flesh may indeed fail. But his word. In fact indeed. The heaven and the earth may pass away, but his word will not pass away. We on this earth, before the rapture or death, whichever could occur, where our Lord of our God seems fit to call us back home, we may perish, going back home, but not able to come again in the same flesh and blood. But Christ our Lord's glory will never perish. His goodness will never fail. Those who abide in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. By daily growing up in the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Who love to be not as reprobates. But for the Lord of our God, those unprofitable slaves, which is their duty to be done. Like Apostle Paul, who laid down his life. Like King David, who said, the fight against Goliath. I come in the name of the Lord of our God. Battle belongs to our Elohim. And in fact, indeed, John the Baptist was the least among that kingdom. I was the greatest among that kingdom. But in the church age, we tell to our Lord our God, though we are least in this kingdom, O Lord, you have chosen us to be great. We overcome the deeds of the flesh, of the failures of the men who have been recorded and kept for us in the Bible for our admonition. And when we are in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, O oh Lord, only thy will be done. Like unprofitable slaves, as Christ our Lord, our God, as the only superior example for us, no man can match in the flesh. 
The superior example he kept for us, his language every day morning, waking up to go to learn the word of the Lord of our God and to teach and to get edified. The superior language where he said it is to do only Father's will. That was his meat. And every believer in Christ have been given a greatest example with our Lord of our God, who was on this earth and sets for us the greatest terms and conditions to enjoy the truth. The failures in the Bible of the pastor in the church age before the church age canon could be formed by the so-called greatest apostles and prophets. At one end or the other of their life they might have failed, but we have an example for us as Christ. Our Lord of God who set for us these greatest standards of all time teaching to us, looking unto Christ, the author and perfecter of our race. We look and we run for His glory. And we don't hesitate. We have Christ our Lord, our God, as our privilege. Therefore, Apostle Paul begins in verse number 7 of 2 Corinthians 13 to tell, You come I, I am wishing it toward the God so that you do no evil, so that this man who have been sent to be appeared as approved, but that which is ideal in your terms, though you count us as reprobates, that you do, that which is truth, that which is right, that which is correct. Don't waste your time thinking vague things, vain things. And the things that have to be appearing to be approved in your sight to become the hypocritical masks of your lives, throw it out. Look upon the truth of the word of the Lord of God. If there is no man preacher to be in your pulpits, then there is no chance that she has to be to have authority over the man. Why you want to be appearing to be approved, doing evil, that's it. When once you take your bath, and if you have something yet to mark on it, don't you feel to go and take bath? As Christ our Lord our God said to Peter, if you don't wash your feet, you don't have fellowship with me, there is a rebound. Then Peter asks, not only my legs, O Lord, my head, my hand, everything has to be taken. Then he tells, once you have taken bath, that's enough. But every time cleansing of your feet is required. If you have to appear in the presence of this world to think, let me impress the woman fellowship, let me impress the church committee, let me impress such and such great president of this country or that country or any idiotic man of this world. And you love to become evil. The great men in the Bible like Elijah and Elisha, like Daniel, like Meshach, Shadrach, Abagnado, like Job, and like Noah. Just imagine your practical life, 120 years of preaching of righteousness to them. Our entire life will end in that, right? Because we may stay over Lord's grace for 120 years, that's the ultima like Moses. But Noah preached 120 years. He went along to preach continuously. Look upon the oppositions. No one believed apart from that family members, the eight. I remember the life of Paul proclaiming for them all the time, believe in Christ. <laughs> Certain few were faithful to him. Apart from that, they did not believe. They called him as reprobates. Remember those great men like Meshach, Shadrach, Abagnado, who said, We shall worship our Lord of our God and we shall know we worship your idols, your mandates, your commands. Look upon Daniel, who said, My innocence has been found in the presence of the Lord of our God. When this man, without being in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, except Paul, and Christ our Lord, and in the New Testament, when He come, the endowment ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, which was there in the past, and now in the present, enlightenment ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. When they could do it, why can't we? Does not our Lord our God say, the least in the kingdom of the church age is greater than John the Baptist? And John the Baptist was the greatest among all of the saints in the Old Testament. We can, in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit alone, 
but those who rejoice and cherish and nourish in the truth they cannot go against the truth <laughs> but everything they do it will be only for the truth having a evil up upon your thoughts and thinking that you're doing Lord's will and Lord's work just remember no need to impress the great men what we have read now they never love to impress the man when Naaman came Elijah said ask him to go and take bath or to go and take water river bath he did not even see his face and Naaman tells in his anger the man did not even come to look at me that's how the proud argument of the Lord of God says in Isaiah 41 21 he talks very proudly if you have any arguments come let's see if you have any cause produce it let's see if you have any reasoning bring it like the way how you get your sexual intercourse with your woman so that you both may become one thinking that the secrets have been revealed to you by your right brain activation by your left brain activation or your middle center activation or by numerology or the things pertaining to this Indian astrology or any other way however you form over the cults you become one with that like you get oneness with your wife get even those reasons like Elijah like the way how Elisha was staunch against to tell to Nama not even to look at his face and he got angered so we are we no need to look upon the filthy rags ministers clothes or the righteousness of this world in their relative terms we have no need to look we look only the absolute standards of Yahweh Elohim when he has commissioned we say thus said the Lord that's it we preach with authority of the word of the Lord of our God by the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit alone we cannot if not we cannot even open our mouth and yet there are people to worry to do evil evil to impress others evil to appear approved but they don't prove that which is honest and right they have their own life they have their own terms they have their own conditions let it be so at the judgment seat of Christ but we are not and ever worried if at all we are worried I am answerable to the Lord not to men what men have only breath in their nostrils what they can nothing no matter however they come they are nothing <laughs> greater is the one that is in us than the one who is in this world the flesh and blood may vanish but his word certainly stands forever and man does not live by bread alone but by every word that comes from the mind of Christ our Lord our God wherewith we cannot do anything against the truth but only for the sake of truth we can do everything only the truth that abides forever and the pastor teacher will be glad only when we can see by daily teaching the physical man may perish but the inward man to be renewed and the way he may become weak at he causes in you to be the dunathai the powerful by wishing them katartisam by proper training by proper discipline by proper fully instructing them to put in your mind the appropriate position of the great wisdom of Yahweh Elohim and his grace propriety with the daily intake of the word of the Lord of God he wishes two things wishing that you shall appear to be approved and so that you cannot act evil so that we can be appearing approved let us be as reprobates what a privilege of a great fearing roaring lion words it could be a lion words of great proudness a lion words where Elijah said to Naaman let us we be called as reprobates but you do that which is right and don't act evil so that we could be coming as in your terms to be up here approved how many of them would certainly think about these things we do not know how many of them yet love to become up here approved by doing evil but not that which is ideal in the Ava Elohim fellowship of daily growing up in the mind of Christ our Lord our God how many of them would certainly think in the terms of this world to be appearing up road but when it comes to the mind of Christ 
not approved, disqualified. The sooner the better you wake up. The flesh as the earthen vessel has the divine treasure of the Lord our God, like Adam and Eve becoming one. We are one flesh in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to produce the character of Christ our Lord our God, who is our only perfect example. Therefore, Apostle Paul tells, I go along to imitate Christ, you follow my steps. What a privilege it would be for us to teach to our children. When the parents abidingly, faithfully come to know and to make the children to be like Apostle Paul's. Not looking upon the terms of his marriage, but in his doctrine to follow the footsteps of Christ. What a great privilege it will be for us every day to enjoy and cherish and nourish in his fellowship. We can do nothing against the truth. Nothing. We don't have that dunamis in us. We are not able, the word says very specifically in the Greek. We are not able. The dunameta. Wherewith we can go against the truth. We are not able to do anything, anything. But in today's Christendom we find the unawares being creeping in because of the negligence of the so-called pastor teachers in daily training up. Where Jude 4 writes for us because of their asal gear and their not doing the work of a watchman properly to blow the trumpet and not able to guard the flock. A ravenous wolves have entered into the pulpit. Therefore, Apostle Paul writes in his Discourse of Ephesians chapter 20, Commend you to the grace and to the word of the Lord our God, which alone is able to build you up. He knew the ravenous wolves will come after his departure. He knew the people will not endure sound Bible doctrine about this godliness of Eusebian. He knew the people will love to take according to their terms itching oriented minded pastors who shall teach them sure rats of miracles, healings and tongues and vain oratory. But not the infallible and inerrant, immutable and veracity word of the truth. Therefore, he writes an instructions to the pastor teachers. If there is anything that you are doing against the truth, your negligence not to teach the word of the Lord of God every day. That alone is enough. You are not for truth, but you are against the truth. You are called to daily teach the mind of Christ, and if you are not doing it, then you are against the truth. Though the Spirit of the Lord our God, to whom this bona fide gift of the pastor teacher causes them to be dunamate, not able to do against the truth, the flesh of this falsified pastor teachers having the terms in kleptes, lustes, misthotes, tupos, canapes, tiflos, and show us oriented minded pastors cause you to go against the truth. Dear brethren, remember what are we for on this earth. How hard it is for honeybees to collect the honey and give you the sweetest one. And when the honey is to be collected from them, can you put your hand directly upon the honeycomb? Won't the honeybees make your hand red and white by biting it with its strings? When the nature itself reaches for us, if there is anyone who is going to take honey from it, they will not make them to go against the truth or against it without harming you. How can we let go the word of the Lord our God, such great infallible one in this church, and make easily to go against the truth? Dear brethren, think over these issues. As we shall come back and continue tomorrow in the same divine illumination of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, The divine illumination of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, which is never ending. So which way you want to go, you decide. 
with our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing movements being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope, and without eternal life. In order to to Lord God the Father that you believe upon my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my salvation, that is the moment itself you shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for is for very simple, believing Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest might is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine, wherewith you shall learn to acquire to possession of the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teacher, the greatest merit is to carry so thon laga and herald the word in season or out of season because of the Dharma to my witnesses where they have been called. The number one Dharma to my witnesses in dwelling Trinity, followed by Bible in our hands, and number two Dharma to my witnesses or hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brethren, not worry besides nature, the entire angelic host will be our witnesses. But what is our work? No matter however the chips may fall. Our work is to rightly divide the word of the Lord our God. Learn a lesson from the honeybee. Anyone that goes against the sting of the honeybee to take the honey, it will not let go until unless you put it to death. As long as we have been kept alive on this earth, we shall be martyrs for Christ, for his truth. To guard it, to protect it, to fight a good fight. And let us not be unaware with the standards of Asal gear to exchange the truth for a lie that is happening by the false pastor teachers who neglect not to teach the word of the Lord of our God every day but for some pieces of bread or for some flannel of barley becoming their God to be their belly enter into the ministry. Clowns have entered, infidels have entered Minors have entered who don't have this great bona fide gift of the pastor teacher from the head of the department of the church. Afterwards, having it though requires a thorough preparation, thorough preparation of the KT theology. When your knees are erect in the presence of the Lord our God, laboring through the soil and dust every day, then the Lord our God will train your tongue to become the pen of the describer because it is you who speaks, not we. So how long you want to worry about the softies that you do? And how long you want to be on this earth wasting your time? What you want to do, you do it. But time is short. Noah plus the seven we have been saved in his 120 years of preaching of righteousness. Though you may have two or three in the presence of the Lord of God, though they may refer only to your family members, do not hesitate and not worry about that. Better to stay alone than to be in bad company. A company of truth is much preferred and it is the only preferring rather than the company of lies and hypocritical masks. Just for some pieces of bread or for some handful of barley going against the truth in their lives. So which way you want to go, you decide, dear brethren, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. Father, what a great privilege it is for us to have fellowship with you through thy word. We are not able to go against thy truth, O Lord, said the Apostle Paul. A man who said, I follow Christ, you follow my steps. Father, how many of them in today's Christendom are able to do that? Thou hast known it very well, O Lord, before it could be upon our mouth to talk about that. Father, we pray, give them more grace to understand thy word. To be able to realize the life that we are going through is a unique one. If at all we do, O Lord, in the heavenly citizenship of thy calling in us, to be greater than John the Baptist, by following your perfect example of your son, the way how he said, my meat is to do Lord's will. The way how he said, being trained in Isaiah chapter 50 verses 1 through 4, morning by morning, waking up to do the, to do the will of Father in heaven so that the tongue can become the pen of the describer. Every believer in Christ has him as a perfect example, as our elder brother, as our propitiation, as everything, O Lord, our Savior, our redemption, which we don't deserve you have given for us. Father, what else can we ask, O oh Lord? Those who are faithfully teaching thy word every day, strengthen them according to thy word. 
when they could kneel down in their presence to look to overcome the infirmities of their flesh and jive up with the spirit because indeed spirit is willing but the flesh is weak all the time Father we thank you for this ministry we thank you for this everything which you have given for us to go and to be enlightened in thy word we thank you for the perseverance we thank you for the protection which you have given for us we thank you for the prayers which you have done for us so that Father we can stand in thy presence to say not to be ashamed but in each and every part of the body of our lives we have magnified thee it is not we O Lord we apprehend but thou hast comprehended over us to do thy will in Christ much less pure less gracious name we pray Father for this grace that has been bestowed upon us now Lord God the Holy Spirit enlighten over these things and challenge us for thy glory those who are listening to these tapes, O Lord, help them to understand thy voice. And help us to spare not, but lift up our voice and cry out, day by day, for thy glory. See if there is any offense you in us, O Lord, lead us in the way of everlasting truth. In Christ's name we ask, Father. Amen.